Hi, welcome to my fourth video all about comparing paper. This one's all about watercolour paper and with a little extra at the end. Right, so this one is Winsor Newton Cotman 300 GSM or 140 pound if you like that watercolour paper. Uh, what this is, or what this is often called, is it's either called knot or cold press. What that means is that uh, when it's gone through, when it's made, it goes through a machine which squeezes it, but it does it with cold rollers. So it's basically it's ironed, but imagine if you iron something with a cold iron, it's not going to make it. So you get a fine grain to it. So can you see the grain? It has like a sort of. It's not rough because you can get rough paper, which has got a lot of texture on it. And rough paper generally is uh, well, it's the sort of thing you use if you're doing landscapes and you want to make them look kind of rusticy using watercolours and you want to have a nice rustic landscape that's that's what you use so watercolour paper now watercolour paper obviously very good for watercolours blah 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 you can use it for other things as well so if you want like a thicker if you're using something that's got a bit more oomph to it you can use it for acrylic colours uh gouache uh, although if you're using things like gouache, I would probably use a smooth paper. But anyway, this is not, which basically means not. So if you want a smooth paper, sometimes it's called smooth. In America, I think it's called smooth. But in this country, it'll it'll either say HP or hot press on it. What the not on this means is it's not hot press, so it's cold pressed. So basically, you get hot press not and rough this is not and yes i know you'd expect them to put something a bit more a bit cleverer than just this is hot press this is not and this is it. but there you go it's, it's it it is what it is which is a horrible expression but i'm annoyingly apt right so first off pencils that's fairly light pencil goes on pretty well uh, obviously you can use this sort of paper with watercolour pencils if you want to so you can start off with this texture and then just paint over it to these are not watercolour pencils these are Norris not watercolour do not confuse your watercolour and your not watercolour pencils it's really frustrating when you're trying to get a watercolour effect and you won't do it because of all kind of thing I do have somewhere I've got a really expensive Caran d'Ache uh, box of pencils which I used to use all the time until I realised that I was going to have trouble that there were, there were some colours I used more than others I've got I think I've got one pencil that's about that that long it's like a third you know it's sort of down to here because I used the, that particular colour so much at the time I suddenly realised I was going to run out of it it's somewhere again that's somewhere up in the attic and I've got to really sort it out but yeah <laughs> Yeah, so this, this comes out quite nicely. It's a, you know, you've got the rough, uh, you've got the texture on there. Well, very similar in look to the multimedia paper. Uh, a little bit heavier, just a little bit heavier. And obviously marketed towards people who admit to being artists. As opposed to the multimedia stuff, which is a bit more tends to be tends to be marketed that, that, so the the covers and what have you look as if they're designed to appeal to people younger than that. So you get like watercolorists will get watercolor paper, and watercolorists quite often are more mature people because for some reason people get this idea that you can magically you know learn stuff when you retire. Which is great because you can, you can give it time. However, not everyone can afford to learn stuff. And also, I think that basically everyone should do something a little bit creative in their spare time anyway, because it's good for you. It keeps your brain going. Right, so, 
You don't have to wait until you're retired, is what I'm trying to say. But not that there's anything wrong with retired people doing artistic stuff. Although it does make it harder for us to sell stuff when you're a professional artist. Because there's always someone's granny who's prepared to do it, something similar for less money. Or for free, which is even more annoying. Because I just enjoy doing it. Because I do, yes, I know. But I prefer to get paid for it. I know, I am bitter. I am bitter, I am envious. So, yeah, so again, you've got, because of the texture on this, it picks up the pencil nicely picks up the pastel nicely so it's a nice pastel paper you'll find uh, pa with pastels so the pastel paper has quite often has this sort of texture on it or a similar texture but it'll be off-white so it'll be like sort of slightly creamy color or sometimes you can get almost um, you can get them in all sorts of shades pastel papers right up to sort of quite dark grays and browns which is a thing but that's because pastel will sit on it sits on top of the paper it doesn't soak in at all so it, it just yeah, it just does what it does it's quite good fun as i say pastels you can get some really nice looks but you just have to be careful because it will if you try and use it in a mixed media it will uh bugger up your things so but on the plus side you can actually use water to make it fit uh do stuff i might show you that in another video Right, so we've got those two. They look really good, it's fine. No problem with those. Right, let's have a look at our felt tips. And of course, because it's watercolour paper, it's designed to soak up watercolour. So it's designed to soak up a little bit. So you will find that this may, uh, felt tips may soak in a bit faster so that you're if you use felt tips in this kind of paper they you they will run out faster because they the paper will suck the life out of them like that which is fine and it really does depend on what sort of look you want so it's sometimes if you're doing like little greeting style and stuff and you're doing like little um you might want to use a thicker paper just to add a bit of depth to something so you might do picture and just do a small picture stick on front of the card it looks quite nice actually because if you've got a smooth card and then you put like a bit of watercolor paper on it it just has that difference in te texture so it's quite sweet uh, it's great if you've got a kid if you've got a kid who's done a little drawing or something like that it just it just gives it a nice little bit of difference um, but again this one because, again because it sucks up the, the color it will it will also bleed a little. This isn't too bad. It's probably again it's probably equivalent to the multimedia papers. But as I say it's quite nice if you've got like a nice simple small simple drawing by a small human. It does look really sweet if you're sending a card to someone. Um, you can theoretically put this is still if you've got a uh, back uh, if you've got a printer that prints from the back to the front, so if it prints through there, <laughs> you can print on this stuff, but I wouldn't. <laughs> it's uh, it's not ideal, it's got a bit too much texture, so the print's not always that good. Focus! Right, so, and last but not least, our friend of the Maka Pen. Mr. Maka Pen. Oh, that really just soaked that up. Mm. I end up losing all my paint. But losing all my paint. Losing all my ink. You can see as I'm doing the forward edge there. It's getting thinner and thinner even though I'm doing it the same way along because it's basically sucking the ink out. Which is not happy, I have to say. Yeah, yeah I don't want to do that too much. 
I will have fun in the club. I will have fun. I will have fun in the club. I don't think that I don't think Ty left an online shop. I can't remember. Uh, right, so if I get the ceiling, so you can see again, it's it's a bit fuzzy there. Can you see the fuzziness? It's not too bad, but not ideal for these sort of things. I'll show you the watercolor paper because obviously it's watercolor paper for watercolors. But I show you these things because. For example, if you are doing a class on watercolours and then you find out you don't really enjoy it that much, you might have a load of leftover paper uh, and it's a shame to waste it. So you might as well have an idea of what you could use it for instead. As I say, it's quite a heavy paper, so if you need it like a light card as well for something, it's quite a nice strong. So you can use it as a substitute for card if you, if you have no choice. It's not the cheapest way of doing it, but I'm just thinking that if you have something you bought for something else and you're not doing that something else anymore, it's you know, it's nice to have options. It's always nice to have options. So yeah, so that's the Winsor Newton one. Now the next one I've got is another watercolour paper. Now this one is an HP. This one is hot pressed, if it will focus it's fairly Focusish. So this one, oh, actually I shouldn't have taken that off. But, uh, that's awesome. Now, if you look at this, you'll see there is very little texture on this one. This one does, is a smooth. It is hot pressed. Whereas the Winsor Newton, which is the not or cold pressed, and you see the difference between these two papers absolutely like it's like like the difference between having a shaved man and a stubbly man uh, they're both 300 gsm they're both 140 pound papers but they're very different to work on so again this one you could use as a substitute card if you really wanted to pay that much money this is Han Moor, I think that's how you pronounce it HP Harmony watercolor paper and this stuff is not, it's not cheap, I have to say. I've got this one online. I think I've got this one from Art Discount. I'm not sure. Off the top of my head. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll stick a couple of, uh, I'll stick some links in the description, places you can get these bits and bobs. Please, please wander around. Do a bit of uh, internet comparison. Do not necessarily because not it's don't necessarily go to the shop, first shop you see to get these things because there will be some places that are really good. There are some own brand products which are really good, so there are some places that do their own stuff. Um, so this one I think was Art Discount. I, I think I know we quite often go to Art Discount because they they often have special offers on things. Their basic prices are not the best, but sometimes they do offers that are really good. The same with places like Cassart, it's quite good. Jackson's, I mean, obviously, places like Hobbycraft and you know, because Hobbycraft do a lot of their own stuff, Cass do a lot of their own stuff, um, which is comparable to the brand stuff ish. But yeah, anyway. So this one, Ponyo, which I don't know. If, if that's not how you pronounce it, please don't be mean to me in the comments. Just just you know understand I'm a poor poor rubbish English person. And, uh, and give me a guide on to how to pronounce it for next time. If I have if I use this this very smooth. Right, so let's start with the blue. So again same problem I had with the marker paper, with the pencil, you see, because there's no texture there, it takes a lot to get to get the, the secondary as it's it takes a fair amount though, you need to work it up a lot to get the colour on there, so not great for colour pencils, but I would imagine that would be quite handy for watercolour pencils because then you can really you know, 
make gradients and do subtle colour changes and things like that, which you, would be harder to do with the more textured papers. So this, I would imagine that the watercolour pencils would work really, really well. Now, I, I the reason I quite like HP watercolour paper is because it's smooth. So whatever you draw on it, it's not gonna, or whatever, whenever you do watercolours and stuff on it, it doesn't have that sort of odd edge. You can have like a, a really crisp edge to things. Um, which is handy for if you're doing illustrations, uh, pattern work, that sort of thing, where you want it to be very precise. I mean, I don't generally do very precise stuff, but I quite like using this as a base because I can control it a bit more. First, the pencil. And so we're going to have a similar problem with the um, pastels as we did with the last one. Well, that looks pretty good. Not too bad. Not too bad, not too bad. It goes on okay. How much do we lose it? We lose a fair amount, but not too much. Well, that's that's surprising. I'm surprised about that, I have to say. I was expecting to lose a lot more colour from that one. I was not expecting those to stick on. But I suppose if it's fine enough texture, maybe it sticks in a little sort of micro bits. Micro bits. Uh, felt tip pen. How is it going with felt tip? Ooh. Well, it sits, I mean, it sits on top for a little while. I was not expecting that. That's interesting. A little bit fuzzy. No bleed through at all. It's very, very slightly bleeding. Hmm. Interesting. That is interesting. Same with the red. It's kind of like, hmm. I suppose it's not really surprising. I mean, it's going to soak up the paper, but it's not so. It doesn't seem to be soaking up as fast as the the, the uh, cold press paper, which is quite nice because it means that it doesn't soak up as much ink. So you're not lo losing as much ink, it took me a little while to get up to these colours. Uh, it's got a slight, ever such a slight uh, bleed on it, but that's okay. Let's have a look at this bit. Mm, not too bad. That's, that seems to be soaking in a lot more though than the uh, felt tip pen. So obviously whatever the difference is between that and the HP, the alcohol has disturbed that. Yeah, that's interesting, interesting. But yeah, I was, I was expecting the uh, felt it then to come up a lot worse than that. Hmm. The, it's, yeah, it's not great for the marker pen. Not as bad as it could have been. Not as bad as it could have been. Let's do it. Let me just, let me just do this so you can see how fuzzy it is. Right, so you see, again, the green's a bit fuzzy. Got a little bit of fuzziness on the. Let's see if we can get in there. It's a little bit of fuzziness on the. Tips. Yeah, you can, again, you can see the fuzziness, but it's not too bad considering. I would imagine that you could use it if you wanted a particularly dense colour on there without too much trouble. Um, I would probably, I don't know if you could, watercolours probably won't go over that where, the ink, where these pens are uh, because obviously watering. These alcohol ones that don't mix watercolours and alcohol does not mix. Although drinking and watercolours, no, they don't mix either. Don't, don't, don't drink an art unless you want to, in which case, can I? Yeah, it's interesting. It hasn't come up quite the way I was expecting. I was expecting these to be a lot more pinky. I was expecting these ones to be. Don't. 
Oh, it's be while I just refocus this bad boy. So these ones come out quite nicely, quite smooth as well. I was expecting these to be worse. Uh, these ones come out quite nice, but they are not as smooth. Frankly, this is not this this type of paper. Well, this type of paper I wouldn't give to kids because it's quite expensive. This is just for testing, obviously. Uh, that's why. I, partially, the, the other reason why I've only done them in A5 little squares is that this is but watercolor paper generally is not cheap. Even cheap watercolor paper is not massively cheap. You can get watercolor papers that are reason for us. So, uh, for example, the works do a whole range of different papers, but they're not fantastic quality. So if you if you like, I suppose if you're just like starting out and practicing and you just want something to, to muck around on that's not too expensive, it's really good for that sort of thing. Or if you've got a, a, a young human who wants to, to just follow some YouTube videos and stuff, they're, that, they're quite good for that sort of thing. The watercolour paper from the works I find is too thin. Uh, so... It's not ideal. You can stretch them. You can stretch paper before you use it, even quite thin paper, which will help. But it's a bit of a procedure to do that. Um, I may in the future do a video on that. It's a bit messy, so I have to sit and get up with the camera or something. Borrow someone's GoPro or something. Not right. Well, no, anyone with GoPro? Yes, I do know someone with GoPro, but. They quite rightly probably wouldn't lend it to me. Which is fair, which is fair. Because I probably would test it for destruction because I'm a bit like that. Actually, no, I wouldn't because it wouldn't be mine, so I'd probably be too worried about breaking it and then not use it. But yeah, I think that was a fairly good job. Yeah, so those were the two watercolour papers. It's not, actually, if I'm quite honest, I don't think it's quite fair comparison because this one is the texture this one's got some texture on it this one is smooth so what i really need is a couple of different uh cold press papers and a couple of different hot press papers and maybe a couple of rough papers just so you can see what the differences are there but for the purposes of this it's what i can find around the house i've always got some of this stuff around because uh, the cold press is generally the cheapest one to get hold of um and then rough is quite easy to get hold of hot press is hard to get hold of even though it's not that much more expensive and you can get cheaper versions it for some reason this isn't as popular the the one because when you see all the um i suppose i'm, I'm just making a, a, a copy making a leap here but you always see them using this and they like do you remember watercolor challenge and things like that they always used to use this kind of paper you hardly ever saw anyone use the, the uh, smooth paper, but the smooth paper is really good if you want to make something that's got a bit more. I mean, for example, you can do with this sort of paper, it's really, it's really cool to do like architectural stuff and it's really crisp and you can do something really quite modernist or just modern. It doesn't have to be modernist, it can be modern, it can be postmodern, it's up to you. But this stuff really is the sort of tends to look kind of rustic -y. It's traditional, it's more traditional, I'd say. You get a more traditional look. Uh, so yeah, but it, it's a it's personal preference, really. Really, really personal preference. And finally, and this is mainly for a laugh, more than it is a genuine test of a paper. This is Chiltern Wove Primed Canvas Pad, right? So this is basically where they get, I'm never entirely sure, some of these are do actually have fabric in them, some of these are just pressed to look like fabric. This one is actually a proper fabric one, so, so if you look, this is actually got fabric in it. This is actually a woven material stuff. So you get it in a pad, so it's canvas in a pad pre-primed, good for doing acrylic sketching, oil sketching, bugger all use for watercolour, in my experience, 
for me zip gouache, but I was wondering whether it could deal with other things because then you can use it to make a slightly uh, chunkier sort of mixed media product if you wanted. So I've got, I'm going to do the same as I have with the paper papers. But look, see that's what I was talking about when you're doing a rubbing, that's what happens. You get the pattern, look at this, oh my gosh. I mean, it's pretty much what I expected would happen, but it is funny to watch. So yeah, so basically it's only colouring the tops of the ridges of the canvas. Be interesting to see what the alcohol markers do, the markers of Thomas and the yellow. Yeah, 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 yellow. So that doesn't look so bad because yellow and white are closer in colour, but the closer in time. Tint? No, not tint. Q. 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 Yeah, that, no, that's terrible. I do not like that. It feels really weird as well, it feels like... Have you ever, have you ever got uh, cotton wool in your mouth? And accidentally crunched it, and accidentally chewed it? I'm not judging. It's kind of that, or it, you know, or, or, t or a little bit tin foil. It's like, it's the kind of that feeling. It's not, not nice. Don't like it. Do not like it. I say do not like it. Would not recommend it. Oh. Interesting. Again, it's basically throwing the tops of it. And not soaking in the tool, so that's there. Yeah, look. That does not soak in the tool. Can you see that? Um, same with the red. That's hilarious. That's going to be awful with the mark. It's going to be awful. Something blue for you, mate. There you go. No, no, no. Look, 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 look. So I've got blue finger. Yellow. Oh, that's sad. Ah, here it comes. Ah, okay. Okay, let's have a look at this. Oh man, that's, that's weird. It's like chalk. Oh, it's like a dead chalk, but I don't like it at all. It's on my finger. Oh no, that's going to be weird. Look at that as well. Bizarre. It's interesting. Not good. Uh, yeah, so obviously not great for. Yeah, no. I mean, it was worth a pump, and it's quite a lot. But uh, yeah, don't use canvas pad for any of these things uh, unless you want an odd textural thing. Oh, the blue still wet. So now I've got that with it. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's quite. I suppose this is quite interesting. You can use that. For, I don't know. I mean, I don't usually use this stuff. This canvas pad stuff was bought for me as a gift. And I was. I looked at it and I was like, no, no, that's not gonna work. But I mean, it doesn't it doesn't bleed through particularly. It's, it is it is actually a proper canvas pad, but yeah, although I am going to be doing wet media and um, other, some other videos, I think there's going to be some other videos rather than just one, uh, I hate it, thanks, I hate it, and uh, well that's the end of it, or at least that's the end of this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment, say if you liked it or not, and we'll see you next time. Take care.